1350 Grissom build, part two, coming up. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another Anderson Modeler. This is now part two of my 1350 scale USS Grissom slash Pegasus build. Uh, this is a kit from Polar Lights. And uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you guys for leaving all the kind comments and words that uh, you left uh, in part one. I really do appreciate that. And so let me get you caught up, uh, first of all, before we do anything else on what I've done uh, since I made the last video. So as you can see here, I did finish up with the painting. Uh, this is a video showing the painting of that upper uh, part of that flat deck that everything is connected to. And the other thing I decided to do was to move away from the original color I had here on the circular area, which was all gunmetal. Uh, after looking at these reference pictures, you can see here of the Pegasus, there is a two-tone paint scheme. And so what I decided to do was to use Vallejo's Neutral Gray instead, and the brushed silver color that I've been using on the model so far. And I think it does a pretty good job replicating the look. Uh, you can see here that I also added the weathering on some of the panel lines there using a Tamiya weathering kit. So if you're going for the Pegasus, I'd highly recommend checking out these pictures on the website. Again, the link is below. But I am not sure how this compares to what was originally painted on the Grissom. Now what's interesting, if you look at the primary hull again here, you'll notice there are these other markings in that circular section which appear to be battle damage. But because I'm uncertain of that, I decided just to leave those off. All right, well, I'm ready to get started here with the video. And I think what I'm going to spend most of my time here in this video is with the electronics. Um, I'd like to take some time to show you some light installation and then also go into more detail uh, with the HLI FX board. Um, I anticipated initially that I'd uh, be completed with the project in this video, but uh, there's a bunch of little things to do here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just go through what I need to do. And I may go on to a part three at the end. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I need to begin with installing the SMDs, but you have to first put into place these clear plastic pins that come with the kit for each of the openings for the running and strobe lights. Now I'm not sure this makes a difference, but a few of them are rather bulky, so I sanded them down a little bit because I wanted the SMD to be as close to the tip as possible. The steps I use for securing the lights are to tape the wire down first followed by using super glue to hold the SMD down. And this is then followed by using a little accelerator. And sometimes using a hair dryer on the coal setting can speed up the curing and drying process. Lastly, everything is light blocked with fabric paint from Tulip. Okay, well all of the SMDs now are in place with the exception of the impulse engines. And it's taken a couple of days to do that. Some of the waiting time has to do with the tulip paint that I'm using to light block everything because it takes time to do that. Uh, I just um, give it overnight to dry before moving on. Now this is the floor of the saucer section. You can see the running lights now are in place. And I thought this would be a good place to stop and share one quick thing with you about the foil tape I've been using. So this stuff here is from NashuaTape.com. You can find it at Home Depot. It's typically used for vent connections for dryers and in heating and air conditioning. And uh, I've noticed Lou use this stuff on his bills for some time. Now, I've typically followed this method uh, in the past with taping down the wire before gluing the SMD to whatever it is I'm connecting it to. And it's helpful to do that because um, it just really just helps to hold everything down as you're, as you're gluing things together. But it also helps to create another stress point so that later on when you're fiddling around with the wires, you're not constantly yanking on the connection between the wires and the LED itself. Um, now, the, in the past, I've used masking tape for this, but the masking tape doesn't always hold. And uh, so I would highly recommend using this foil tape because it not only has a very strong adhesive, but it conforms to anything you're taping it to. So it really does a good job holding on both sides of the wire there. So the wire is not going to really fit, you know, move around on you there. Um, okay, so what I have next now to move on to are the strip lights that I'm going to be using for the saucer section, at least to eliminate the windows. And I also wanted to make note here that this is the stuff I had on hand from HDA Model Works, which is a thinner strip of uh, LEDs there. And I thought this would be um, bright enough to illuminate the windows, but it wasn't. So I had to order the other kind of tape that he has on hand. And I'll put the links down to these below. 
And these just have larger SMDs, which will do a better job illuminating the windows. Okay, well moving on now to attaching wires to the segments of strip lights. This is done by first adding a bead of solder at the points located at the edge of each strip. You follow this by heating up the wire and connecting them onto those solder points. Now I'm still a bit clumsy doing this, so please take a look at a video that I have a link to in the description. The guy who does the video does a great job telling you how to do this and also provides some really good suggestions like using a heat sink to protect the strip while you work. And that's that little clamp, by the way, that you see there on the strip. Next, I use the adhesive backing on the strips to secure them to the model, but also reinforce this with super glue. As you can see here, the foil tape is helpful with keeping the wires organized and to keep them from obscuring any windows, as would be the case if left to just rest on their own. And here you can see ample lighting for the windows now. I'm not, by the way, putting an additional strip for the bottom dome. This uh, alone is providing enough light for the upper and lower windows. All right, well, it's now time to move on to hooking things up to the HLI effects board. Before I begin, I'd like to uh, go over some slides that I've created for you guys to show you some basics on how to hook it up. So this again is the HLI effects board. And first, let's take a look at hooking it up to a nine volt power source. Here you see a connection between the VIN point to a switch and the exit and wire from that switch to the positive of the battery. The ground connection is then hooked to the negative side of the battery. Now the effects board comes with three basic effects. Connection A allows for blinking of the navigation lights, B for a strobe effect, and the C connection is for the impulse engines. I actually plan to have steady nav lights as seen with the Grissom in Star Trek 3, so I won't be using that connector. I will, however, be using the strobe effect, and this is how it's connected. We have the negative or black lead from the light source to the point B connection, while the positive or red lead is then hooked to this side of the switch. Here's a look at that effect. Now there are a couple of options when it comes to the impulse engine effects. A slow ramping of brightness with faster pulsations at the top of that will result if you hook up the ground from the light source to point C with the red or positive lead to the same side of the switch as we saw with the strobe. You can also choose to hook the ground into D for a flickering effect. To choose the option that allows you to switch between both of those effects, you can hook up a toggle switch through point D instead. Since I'm satisfied with the ramping effect, I'll just be using point C, and here's a look at both the strobe and impulse effects together. So the link to HLI is below, and by the way, they also include other videos uh, on their website that will show you the effects even further or in more detail. So check it out, and uh, the board I think only runs $20. All right, so a um, couple things here before we move on is uh, I went ahead now and um, soldered wires onto the board. Now, I didn't record a lot of video of me uh, soldering because soldering really is not my strong suit here, <laughs> but I do get by. Um, but I also thought this would be a good chance to tell you about some videos I came across that uh, before soldering this board together, I wanted to uh, uh, touch up um, and refresh my memory on how to do that because I don't do this very often. And uh, I found these ver videos very helpful. I actually learned about rosin paste flux. The first I'd heard of this was with Kenny Conklin. I was asking him some hints on how to solder points onto uh, or how to solder wires onto a board like that. And he mentioned uh, rosin paste flux and I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> but uh, the guy definitely does a great job going over this stuff. It really does help with getting to solder onto the wires. Okay, what I'd like to do next, even though I went over some of the stuff in the slides just a second ago, is actually show you the board hooked up. Uh, as I was doing this, I thought it would be helpful for you to see that. Now, if uh, this is not of any interest to, to you, feel free to skip ahead. I know this stuff can be kind of dry. <laughs> uh, so let me go ahead and show you what I've done so far. Um, also wanted to let you know, I did decide to go ahead and use point A as well. Uh, after fiddling around with things, I thought it'd be cool just to have the lights blink. All right, let's take a look. All right, let me spend a few minutes now to go through the connection here. I know I did this with the diagrams, but I'd like to do this here as the board is sitting right in front of you. And so let's start from this end, this corner, down to the three points down here. So we're going to start with our VIN. The VIN connection now has a line from the board feeding out this way to connect to our uh, positives of our running lights. Now from here we've got another wire that's connected from this point that's going to feed through this intertwined line that you see going out there. That's going to go to the switch and the battery. And so the ground 
is hooked uh, here to that same line that's leaving and this is what's going to go out of our display stand post. So now let's go down to point A. Point A has a line feeding from it and it's black so that is negative going to the negatives of our running lights while the positives as I said are going now to the wire that's hooked into the VIN as well as the other one leaving. The point B is basically the same thing we've got except it's coming from point B to the strobe light but the positives from the strobe light and there's only one right now is going to where the rest of the positives hook up. Now you can ignore this line C I accidentally did that I wasn't paying attention I was as I was soldering these things on here but that doesn't matter we still need to uh, wire in an extension out to the impulse and that's basically what has to happen from here now I have to wire in an extension from these negatives to feed towards the running lights of the saucer section and the nacelles as well as for the other strobe lights so uh, I know for those of you who know how to do all this um, it's it's pretty basic stuff but for those of you just getting started that's why I'm doing this so it gives you guys an idea of what it actually looks like here all right I wanted to take things one step further then and show you the extensions that I've wired from our initial bundle here that I had mentioned are going to feed through the pylons to the upper sections of the ship so what I've got now is one nacelle with the running lights hooked to the extension that we have for the running lights and the strobes to that of the strobe lights. And what I've done to help me out here is to color code the wires so I have these blue ones. I painted the extension for the strobes blue, the extension for the running lights this green color, and for the impulse engines this yellow-orange color. So you can see everything's wired in together and it's all working out. So an interesting point that both Lou and Boyd mention in their videos is a great way to approach building this model is to separate in two parts. You've got the upper half and the lower half. Uh, and that's the approach I'm taking here. Um, you know, when you're painting, you're, you're kind of doing it all together. But once construction starts and light installation starts, you'll start to see how everything kind of splits off into two. So the first thing is to get the pontoon section ready because that's where all the wires are going to uh, come through and then uh, work on then the upper section. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing then in the next video is finally putting all this together. Uh, before I move on though, let me show you real quickly what I have planned for the stand. Well, this is how the display is coming along and this is actually a converted lab tray for glasses. Uh, you basically keep the person's glasses here along with their paperwork and you'd uh, create a tag for their name here and I was just looking around the other day for a stand some ideas for a stand and came across this lab tray and thought it would work out well and I think it's gonna work perfectly so I have the two switches here there will be two batteries uh, in place here uh, one for the uh, lights coming from the HLI effects board the other for the windows now, uh, I also created some decals here, and I did not design these, so these are for free. If you want a copy of what I've put together here, so you can print your own, feel free to email me at innershuttermodeler at gmail.com. This is open to any of my subscribers. And the idea is to put the plaque of the Pegasus here and this Starfleet Science emblem on the opposite side over here. Okay, well that is going to be a wrap for this video. Um, I, I know it seems like a short one. Um, this, all the stuff that I did, however, did take me uh, a, a couple of weeks really to get um, taken care of because you know my work schedule the way it is right now doesn't provide any time in the morning. I used to be able to do some model building in the morning and squeeze that in, but I just can't do that right now. So I have to cram everything on the weekends along with all the other stuff I want to do. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the next video will conclude then with the completion of the project as we get into constructing everything and putting the decals and everything else together. All right, uh, one other thing before I go here is San Diego Comic-Con is coming up next weekend, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, the uh, oil painting that I was working on, uh, the delayed part two. Uh, so this is, of course, the Enterprise approaching the Galaxy Berry. This is the first time I ever tried painting a starship. It was a lot of fun doing that. I did choose the Enterprise because, uh, you know, there's not a lot of detail on the surface of the ship. Um, but I thought it would be a great one to, uh, to begin with. And um, so, yeah, I, I definitely look forward to doing more. Um, also painted Jean-Luc Picard uh, in his famous picture here. I'm sure many of you have seen this picture of him. 
Um, he was really fun to do. He's very distinctive uh, characteristics to his face there. And um, yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. So uh, yeah, I'll be displaying some of my art there at the San Diego Comic Con. If you live in San Diego or close by, you know, there's no ticket, as I mentioned uh, in the previous video. Uh, to get into the art show, it's at the Manchester Hyatt. Uh, I think I mentioned Marriott last time, but that's right next to the convention center. All right, guys, I'll see you then in the next video. Please take care of yourselves. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at energetomodeler at gmail.com. Thanks. <laughs>